going to give it just a few more minutes before we start this morning. It is Palm Sunday, so I hope you've grabbed something to wave. Well, good morning, everyone, and blessed Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, as we gather. Even though we may not be together in person, we still need to have a palm processional today. So I hope that you have either made something or you can grab something to wave. Because when we do processional, you're going to get up and you're going to move too. I've got some palms here, and we're going to wave those. Um... All I'd ask is, you know, grab something. It could be your coat, could be the palm of your hand that you're going to wave as we process together this morning. All I ask is, don't let it be a shoe. Oh, a shoe! Another shoe! Now, if you know what that's from, you can put it down in the comments, and we'll both know we're geeks. But anyways, um, we will be having Holy Week services um, via online means both on Monday, Thursday at 7 and on Good Friday at 7. And we will be joining together for Easter worship next Sunday at this exact same time. Some incredibly interesting things are planned for this week, so I hope you will be there. Okay, everybody got something to wave? Okay, good. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I attached a, a service to the earlier email, or there's also an Adobe document out there if you would like to get that and follow along. Those places where there's things back to back, your part is usually the second part. So our processional gospel this day comes from Matthew 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heavens! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends our reading. Please join me in our dialogue. On Palm Sunday so many years ago, the people saw Jesus and asked, Who is this? So in worship we respond. In worship we declare, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is our teacher and preacher. Jesus is a miracle worker and healer. Jesus is the source of our love. Jesus is our path in the wilderness. So we, may we lay down our hearts like they laid down their coats. Let us worship Holy God. I invite you to pick up whatever you're going to be waving. Get up, 
Yeah, you gotta get up. Come on. We're gonna go press S. And since I can only do two things at once, we're not singing until I get stopped. Oops. I'm also gonna turn it around so you can see where we're going. I had hoped to do the whole service outside, but I can't keep a Wi-Fi outside. So we had to have a little bit of change in plans. Wave, what you waving? Waving your palms? Just checking on you, gotta make sure. give me just a second to get reset up and we will continue with our worship Her. here just a sec folks you're gonna be looking at a ceiling for a second Just a second. See, isn't, isn't this fun? Okay. Where's my chair? Just a second. We'll be right with you. You can still keep processing just because I've come inside. You don't have to stop. stories mind yourself <laughs> this isn't working as I anticipated but we'll get there I promise For some reason my mic isn't wanting to go in okay there's that problem solved now I gotta get to the next problem which is getting you back up where'd you go oh there we are Some things just don't work out as I planned. Have you noticed that? Okay. Give me just a second, folks. Okay. I really didn't think this would be that hard. I'm learning otherwise. It's a good practice. Knowing not to do this again. <laughs> okay. I think we're almost there. Get everything put back in its little places here. People who will watch this afterwards are going to be going, they are so bizarre over there. 
Okay, and now we can get some a little bit more light in here. There we go. Oops, or not. Okay, fine. We'll just do this. <laughs> okay, back to our service. Now that you've watched me fumble around for a while. Let's sing all glory, laud, and honor because how could it not, we not sing that on this Palm Sunday. All glory, laud, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal Son, now in the Lord name coming our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to our Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels are praising you on high. Creation and all mortals, a chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The multitude of pilgrims before, with palms before you went, our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. <clears throat> to you before your passion, they sang their hymns of praise. To you now high exalted, our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Their praises you accepted, accept the prayers we bring. Great author of all goodness, O oh good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I've asked someone, I've asked Wendy to join us in via Sky or via Zoom this morning to read our lessons. We're going to see how that works. So, Wendy, I th think you can unmute yourself. Are you? Can you talk and say something? Yep. Okay. Here. Go ahead and read our lessons and help us today. The first reading is Isaiah 54. Not, 4 through 9a. 
The Lord God has given me the tongue of the teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who were taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult or spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, read, spoken, and heard. For this the word, word O oh God, God, we give, give thanks. thanks. Our psalm is 31, 9, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my but life is wasted, wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten. Out of mind, I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whisper of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. You have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, read, spoken, and heard. For this word, O God, we give you thanks. Thank you, Wendy. Our gospel this day is the Passion according to St. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Wendy and I are going to be sharing it, so before she speaks, I will keep turning her around so that you can at least somewhat look at the person who is talking. Now Jesus, now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when, he had been but when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. 
The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. After flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole earth until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let's see if Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split, and the tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What's in a name? Hmm. Interesting question. If you, like me, when you were in school, had to memorize something out of Shakespeare... Perhaps you hear that question and you immediately think of Juliet's speech to her lover, Romeo. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, for it is thy name that is my enemy. But if thou wilt not swear to me my love, and I will no longer be a Capulet. 
It is thy name that is thy enemy. What's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. Names, as Juliet reminds us, have power. Names also come with a great deal of baggage, whether we want them to or not. As a pastor, I've been tripped up by names a time or two. Now, sometimes that's because I mispronounce them or I misspeak them, which is really bad when I do that in a funeral, and unfortunately, I have a couple times. But what's also kind of more troubling for me is that the name I know somebody by isn't like their real name, the name on their birth certificate or driver's license. And that's always kind of interesting. Now, sometimes it's really obvious that it's not their, their real name when it's something like stinky or grouch or warthog or even evil. Yes, I know people who go by all of those names. I can tell by those that I'm not going to find anything official under those names. But when the name I know them by are things like Robert, Trice, Jack, Lee, not so much. I have had to make many a frantic call to family members trying to find out the real name of somebody so that I can be with a, with a parishioner in the hospital because they don't know them by their other names. Funny name story for you this morning. In one of the first churches that I served, we had this elderly brother and sister. Elderly like in the brother was 96 and the sister was like 94. And they were still really, really active in the congregation. Well, the sister died and her two sons came back to, for the funeral. Her daughter lived locally, so she had already made all of the arrangements. So we get to the day of the funeral and one of her sons gets up and starts talking about his mom. And this is kind of how it started out, at least from my memory. He said, you know, first of all, thank you all for coming here today to help celebrate my mom's life. I also know that I see people from all of my lifetime here, and some of you know me by different names. Growing up, my mom and everybody I know called me Dennis. My first day in boot camp, drill sergeant came up to me and said, what's your name, recruit? And he said, Stanley, drill sergeant. But my mom calls me Dennis. Then the drill sergeant got in my face and said, Boy, do I look like your mama? Ever since, I've been Stanley. But I'll answer to Dennis, too. The power of a name. From that triumphant ride into Jerusalem to hanging on a cross on the city's outskirts, Jesus had a name of power. A name that would cause other wise, righteous folks to turn their backs on him and even attack him. Jesus, that name that once struck fear and hatred in so many, is now the name by which folks like you and me are proud to be called. Jesus, Paul reminds us, is the name that is above every name. And that one day will have the power that when all encounter him, they will bow down and worship him. Jesus, that name above every name. Now, admittedly, the name Jesus all by itself isn't all that unusual of a name now or then. Jesus is still very common in Spanish and Mexican cultures, among others. And even at the time of Jesus of Nazareth, that name was well known. In fact, the Jewish historian Josephus once cynically bragged that he knew more than 20 people with the name of Jesus. Even if you listened closely to that Matthew reading this morning, both men there who have been accused and convicted had the name Jesus. One, Jesus Barabbas, and the other one, Jesus, who is called Messiah. The name Jesus separated from the one called 
Messiah is just another name. Yet we are called back to the beginning of Matthew's gospel where Joseph is told to name that child which Mary is carrying, Jesus. It's not a family name. It's not to name him that because maybe it's his, a favorite of somebody or his future mother-in-law or even the angels. No, Joseph is told to name the child Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. That's literally what Jesus means. He saves we know from the beginning of his time here on earth, this is no ordinary Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. For this is the one in whom the salvation of the world will rest. How's that going to happen? Well, St. Paul helps us understand that too. As sung in that beautiful Christ hymn from Philippians, this Jesus doesn't equate being divine with something to be exploited, to be used for his own good, trying to gain an upper hand when it comes to this world and the people in it. No, in his case, it will give him the power to redeem those who can't help but take advantage of what's being offered. One of the instructions given in that second account of creation was that the tree of the fruit of the knowledge, the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil should not be eaten. The tempter comes and says, that won't happen. Rather, the reason God doesn't want you to eat of the tree is because in the day that you do, you will know the difference between good and evil and you will be like God. Who could resist that? How many times would we love to kind of wave a magic wand and change things? Many of us today would like to go back a few months and figure out who was the first person who had this coronavirus version and stop that person from ever leaving their house so that this whole pandemic would never have happened. Or perhaps we'd like just a little bit of God for a quick moment so we could create a cure for this. And then it, the pandemic would be over and we could leave our house and those safe, stay safe, stay home orders could be lifted. Or maybe just a little wink of God. We could come up with a vaccine. If you were like God, how hard would it be not to exploit it? But Jesus, the one called Messiah, chose not to exploit it, but to set it aside for a time. To humble himself that he might experience and fully enter into our humanness. He said, he saves us not because he casts out all things with a power, with a kind of powerful name, with a magic wand of divineness, in a sense. He doesn't make everything perfect. Rather, he becomes the one through whom we are reborn into a new humanity. Ones still marked by a tree, but not a tree that separates. Rather, we are marked by the tree of the cross that draws all people to the one who does make everything new, including us. Who can resist being part of a power like that? Having been marked with that cross, though, we know that that cross doesn't have the final answer. Our hope does not lie in a great man with good ideas who had a heart for people and justice and mercy and was killed by some sort of mean, nasty, old, rule-driven people. If that, were the case, if that were the case, then the cross would be nothing more than a bloody symbol of death. The tree of the cross that marks us does so because it leads to the greatest event of all history, Jesus being resurrected from the dead. Because Jesus' tomb is empty, we can look back at that cross-shaped tree and embrace it as a symbol of what God does when things look its worst. The cross-shaped tree taunts those who want to tear us down and saying we're just being naive and don't understand how the world works and tells them they don't get it at all. That tree-shaped cross is what keeps hope alive because we know even today, even in the midst of everything we are experiencing, God is still at work, 
God has not turned the divine back on us or this created world. Rather, God is opening our eyes to see ways in which that non-exploited presence of Christ is working through us and in us so that others may be affected. So how do we respond to that kind of power raining down on us? We do as Paul asked his disciples back then and asks of us now. Let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Like Jesus, we are God's precious children. And like Jesus, we are called to freely decide to take up that mantle of servanthood, knowing that it may not always lead where we want. And as we do this, we are reminded of who we really are, child of God, marked with the cross of Christ, and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. In these next few days, we will walk through the holiest time for those of us named by Jesus. We will listen and embody some of the most tender moments, as well as be jarred by one of the worst and bloodiest executions in history. And we will join much on a morning like this, and wait, wait to hear, wait to hear anew that death and destruction are not the final answer. We will wait in silence, in darkness, and in remembrance. Make no mistake, it will be a difficult week. Through it all, though, we remember the name of the one who gives us the power and strength to do it, Jesus through this journey, we remember once again that everything we have, including the faith that empowers our service, is not of ourselves. It is a gift from God. We have no power on our own. We have no inherent authority. Left to our own devices, we too are among those who have turned our backs on Jesus and his authority. We are called to face that painful reality this week. And then, like Paul, we are called to give thanks to the one who has redeemed and restored us. So we journey this week, empowered by Jesus, the one called Messiah. And we rejoice in the fact that God not only knows our name, but we know God's name. And may that name give you the power to face this Holy Week. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, from answering Moses' request for a name with I am who I am, to Jesus who calls us, names us, and remembers us as he comes into his kingdom, we stand in awe of it all. You put up with so much from your creation. Why you didn't give up on us ages ago is mind-boggling. And even more so is that you would humble yourself to make us anew one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your trust, and your steadfastness. Walk with us through this week that we may meet you and your power anew. As it is in accord with your will, O God, we ask it. In the name of the one whose name is above all names, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I would invite you to join me in our response hymn this day, which is Be Glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. In our song, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In our song, Lord, be glorified today. In your church, Lord, be 
today. We share our faith this day using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, let us pray for all according to their needs. Each petition will end with, Hear us, O God, and I invite you to respond with, Your mercy is great. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatening habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, drive away the fear and anger that causes us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek liberation for the oppressed. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison. Grant wisdom and guidance to those who are searching for cures to COVID-19 and all other diseases. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, send your hate saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying, bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief. As we gather today, we pray for the friends and family of Orame Sackman, who you called home to be with you this week. We pray for healing and wholeness for Bob, Al, Marvin, Verna, and all who are on our hearts and minds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Be also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace, either by typing in peace to one another in our comments today, or maybe if you're with somebody, give them a hug or share peace with them in one way or another. Peace of Christ with you. Peace, everybody. As I have been encouraging you throughout our um, online worship services is to still do some sort of offering, whether that is a monetary offering that you drop in the mail, or if you offer something of yourself to our God, maybe it's writing a letter or offering a prayer, 
or an act of service or making a mask and giving them away. I invite you to, in this time, make that offering to our Lord and Savior. I'm going to invite you now to sing with us our offering song. Um, hopefully uh, you got the words to it if you don't already have it memorized. I have to hear the organ in my ear or I can't start this. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, <coughs> and uphold me with your free spirit. <coughs> I should have had some coffee this morning. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we now, a prayer, as we now prepare to walk this week with Jesus, from today's triumphant entry into Jerusalem to gathering in a room for a meal, to climbing that hill called Calvary, to an early morning garden, May we rejoice at the empty tomb. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We close today ready to walk that journey one more time. As we sing together, Were You There? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? <clears throat> Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble, were you there when they nailed him to the tree? <clears throat> were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced
pierced him in the side. <clears throat> Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Go in peace. Christ journeys with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us on this Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. May God's peace strengthen you as you walk this journey. See you on the road.